Imagine a place that is so wrong, so utterly and completely misaligned with human existence, that it causes you to wither and rot from the inside out. A place so inhospitable that it upends natural laws to torment its trespassers. So vast and unfathomable that our world fades to a speck. In the eye of this infinity, our lives cease to even register on the scale of existence. Such a world is the final humiliator of man, and when we charge headfirst into such monstrosity, what should we expect but suffering? It is our ceaseless folly to pursue answers from that which we do not understand. Perhaps some things are better left unknown, better left at the fringes of madness, out of the reach of our fragile, fragile sanity. Then we may lie to ourselves and convince one another that we hold some significance, that we exist at the pinnacle of creation. This place that you have imagined exists within the world of Kane Pixel's back rooms, and it has rightfully filled many viewers with sheer terror. If you're familiar with the back rooms as a concept, but not with Kane Pixel's series specifically, it's important to note that they are not one and the same. There are many similarities, but Kane borrows only the basic details of the back rooms while creating new lore and telling an original narrative. The series follows the story of an organization named Async after they have opened up a portal to another dimension. We watch as they attempt to explore, to understand, and to ultimately capitalize upon a strange world that is known by many names. The complex, the machine, the back rooms. As the Async researchers mark steadily toward their goals, they show time and time again how woefully unprepared they were for the consequences of their actions. Unintended side effects keep happening, and they don't know how to stop them. Without warning, people from our world are somehow slipping through into the halls of the complex, never to be seen again. Worse still, it appears that Async isn't alone in the back rooms. Strange creatures stalk the researchers, watching silently from distant halls. The endless expanse of winding yellow corridors serves as a hunting ground for beasts beyond comprehension. And yet, Async trudges on in this unfamiliar place, eager to discover some hope of answers, or some hope to right the wrongs they have committed. Traversing the back rooms is no easy feat, however. The architecture of the complex is jagged and inefficient, unfit for human exploration. The back rooms are made up of a series of interconnected liminal spaces. If you're unfamiliar with that term, let me explain. When an architect designs a space for people to work or live in, the rooms will be specified to one purpose or another. One room may be set aside as a kitchen and be furnished with cookware, while another may serve as an office space containing desks and computers. Between these areas, we find hallways, lobbies, and foyers, areas that are designed to help us efficiently navigate without spending too much time away from the things we want to do. These are liminal spaces, the places between places, in the complex, the rules of design are flipped on their head. The back rooms are composed exclusively of transitional spaces, and no room has any clear purpose. Hallways connect to large open rooms with high ceilings before looping back into more halls. Navigating these spaces is disorienting, making it very easy to become lost. This is really only an issue for async employees, however, who are able to enter and exit the back rooms through the portal. If you're lucky enough to slip into the complex by accident, there's no need to worry about getting lost or finding an exit, because you won't ever be getting out, no matter what. The back rooms have always struck me as being similar to a procedurally generated space, like an AI was directed to create an office building with only Google Images as a guide. It lacks all context for how a human would navigate or even exist within such a space, even if it looks vaguely man-made. There's no care given to human comfort, in fact, the opposite is true. There's a concept in architecture today known as hostile architecture. Hostile architecture interrupts how humans interface with an environment. Typically, users interact with the design in a way that is intuitive for them. It's why doors that you pull to open have bars to pull, and doors that you're meant to push have plates for pushing against. Humans naturally see ways that our bodies fit to our environment, but sometimes the things we interact with are designed not to fit the most common example of this concept is in anti-homeless design features. Have you ever sat on a park bench and thought, man, this thing sucks, it's so uncomfortable. That's intentional, uh, probably, but it's not for you. It's so that homeless people can't sleep on it. Another example are the so-called skate stoppers that businesses install on ledges and rails to prevent kids from skateboarding on their property. 
It's a much less serious example, but in both cases, the intention remains the same, to upset the way in which humans interact with the environment. This sentiment echoes throughout the backrooms on a radical level. While hostile architecture in our world makes it more difficult for humans to act naturally, the backrooms make normalcy an outright impossibility. The entire space conveys only one meaning to the humans traveling through it. There's nothing here for your kind but misery. Movement through the back rooms involves walking across the vast stretches of hallways, climbing through holes in the walls, walking up steep ramps, and taking large, unsafe falls. All of that takes a cumulative physical toll on the human body, but it doesn't stop there. You see, within the back rooms, there's an ever-present fungal infection that affects anyone who enters. Throughout the series, we can hear async researchers developing coughs as the infection reaches them, even through their hazmat suits. In the episode Autopsy Report, we see the effects of long-term exposure to this mold, and it's pretty devastating. If simply walking through the complex has such an effect on the human body, can there be any doubt as to our incompatibility with the back rooms? It would be a mercy if the brutality ceased there, at the physical level. But the back rooms hold little mercy for mankind. In the episode Missing Persons, we see how the back rooms enact psychological torture on Peter Tinch, an async researcher, by ripping him out of time. One moment, Peter is walking alongside his cohorts, but he is stopped when he begins to hear chanting off the beaten path. He pursues the noise down a side corridor, only to find a dead end. Peter attempts to return to his fellow researchers, but they vanish without a trace. Unbeknownst to Peter, he's been flung two months into the future. Later, in Reunion, we see that Peter's time stuck in the back rooms has left him paranoid and dangerous, his fractured mind leading him to become extremely violent with another researcher. This proves that a prolonged stay inside of the back rooms serves to poison not only the body, but also the mind. Really quickly, if you've made it this far and are enjoying the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing. I'm approaching 100 subscribers and it would absolutely make my day. Even if the passive, physical, and psychological toll of the back rooms wasn't enough, it holds one more awful secret. Within its halls roams the life form, a creature, or perhaps a group of creatures, that wander the complex. Their exact nature and motivations are unknown, but they are exceedingly violent towards any human who sets foot into the back rooms. In the video that started it all, found footage, we see an encounter with one of these creatures after a teenager named Kane Pints slips into the back rooms. He runs from the creature through a series of impossible rooms, desperate to save his life. Unfortunately, the back rooms are full of dead ends, and Kane is cornered and killed by the life form. We see other encounters with the life form in episodes like Pitfalls and Found Footage 2, with each one of these ending a little bit differently. A connecting thread we see throughout each of these episodes is the deadly conjunction of environment and threat. Long, open hallways offer nowhere to hide from the life form. When the halls finally do give way to hiding places, they're either dead ends or else they're so difficult to navigate that the creature can catch up. The back rooms seem to be the perfect hunting grounds for the life form, as though it was designed for the humans to be caught. Of course, this is obviously true when you remember that no matter how far or how fast you run, there is no escape from the back rooms. I've spoken a lot about the complex like it's a thinking thing, plotting against humanity, but it's very hard to say that there's any intention behind the events that we see taking place in the back rooms, and that might be the most cold and inhuman thing about them. As humans, we naturally want to see a purpose in everything. In our world, we're used to looking at everything as directional. Time flows in an arrow. Each event that occurs has a chain of events leading up to it, a constant exchange of cause and effect. Those are the rules of our world but it is almost certainly the case that the back rooms operate under very different rules. Perhaps there are no rules at all. A world with no rules affords no anchors, no references with which to orient ourselves. If concepts of time and causality fail to apply in the back rooms, then why should we expect any other laws or rules to pertain? It's only by some miracle that humans can even walk the halls. If other natural laws or the universal constants had been different, 
then the first async researcher would have been reduced to base elements the moment they stepped inside, atoms failing to maintain their bonds. But instead, we see a world that's just barely habitable, one that draws in people like a carnivorous plant. The busy little bugs at async continue to venture deeper and deeper, never noticing that they're being digested at every level of their being. Stop! Stop! Don't Stop! Don't! 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 None of us know what the future holds for async. The back rooms are unpredictable and unstable, so any prognosis is likely doomed to an accuracy. What we do know is this. No matter how deep async digs, misery awaits them in the back rooms. I'm Curmudgeon. Thanks for watching.